Right, so we know a little bit about the normal distribution now and how to use those lookup tables for the z values. Um, so that was when we had a mean of zero and a standard deviation and variance of one. So what about if we have something that's not the standardized um, format? So this one we've got x following a normal distribution with a mean of 205 and a standard deviation of 20. So we need to know how to deal with this. We can't look that up on the table because the table is only for that z distribution. So we need to transform x onto z in some way so that we can use that table to look up an equivalent amount. So if you think about your transformations of curves, we're going to apply the same principles. So we want whatever our x distribution is, we want to shift it down to have the mean at zero and we want to uh, shrink or expand it so that the standard deviation is one. So we're thinking transformations of that curve. So first of all, if we do x minus mu, where mu is the mean, so in this case the 205, that will do the job of transforming it so that it uh, shifts the curve and it's centred around zero. So we've got one of the variables taken care of. If we want to change the, the spread, the size of that, that curve horizontally, we need to do a division. So we'll divide through by the standard deviation so that we can get it to match one. So this transforms the horizontal spread. If we apply this transformation to our x distribution, we will get the equivalent of what would happen in z. So for this one that we, we're talking about now, this 205 and 20, if we want the probability that x is less than a particular value of x1, we transform that into the z equation using that bit in the red box. So we would do the x value take away 205, divide it by 20, and that tells us what value to look up on our z table. Let's see how this really works. So using the same distribution, we're going to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 230. Okay, so using that transformation, we're gonna take that 230, and change it into something that's equivalent on the z curve. So we'll take off the 205, divide by the 20. That gives us 1.25. So we're looking for phi of 1.25 because it's everything less than or equal to. Remember, the or equals to doesn't make a difference. You look that up on the uh, normal distribution table and you get 0 0.894. Okay, we'll do it again. We've got another distribution. X follows a normal distribution with mean of 4 and variance of 25. We want to find the probability that X is greater than 1. So we'll turn that 1 into the equivalent Z value by taking away 4 and dividing through by the standard deviation. Remember, standard deviation will be the square root of the variance, so we want to square root that 25. So we divide, take off the 4 and divide by 5. So we're looking for z being greater than 0.6. Now remember our z tables only give us a less than or equal to um, value, not a greater than, so we need to just figure out what that would be equivalent to. So that's the area that it's representing. This would be the same as if we did less than 0.6. And we look that up on the tables and we get 0.726. Okay, next one. We're going between 2 and 7, so we need to transform it into the z equivalent first. Take off the mean, divide by sigma. Okay, let's have a think about what that looks like. So we're going in between minus 0.4 and 0.6. We've got to figure out how to, how to make that. So we can do 5 0.6 minus 5 0.4, sorry, negative 0.4. And that negative we take care of as a 1 minus, so that's our final result. Okay, next one. This one's taking a worded question and uh, applying the normal distribution. So the lengths of 50 leaves are measured and have a mean of 61.4 centimetres, standard deviation 16.8. How many of the 50 leaves would you expect to be between 59.5 and 69.5 centimetres? 
So we're going to talk about L for the length of leaves, follow the normal distribution with those details that were given in the question. We want the probability that it's between those two values. We need to transfer them into something that's equivalent on the Z curve. And we get these numbers. OK, so we find the probability there by doing our usual thing with the normal. And of course, draw a picture of this if it helps to you to figure out what it is that you're actually needing to do, whether you're doing a subtraction or a one minus and that sort of thing. Look them up on the table. And that's what we get. So the probability that they lie between those two numbers is 0 0.2301. We haven't quite answered the question yet. Just be careful here because you might miss the last couple of marks because you haven't actually fully finished this question. We want to know how many of those 50 leaves we expect to be between those amounts. So we will do our probability times by 50. And that will tell us how many leaves we could expect to be in that range.